I wouldn't say you don't need to be able to like make different genres, but if you're able to just make one genre and just be really, really good at that one thing, you're gonna excel no matter what. My name is Dassey. I'm from Miami, Florida. Some of my inspirations for even like starting to make beats really were people like Jimi Hendrix, ACDC, Lil Wayne, things like that. That's just me just going out to the world just trying to find music. And then just, I was trying to learn how to play those songs. And after a certain point, I'm just like, you know what? I want to be like that. I want to create my own stuff. I started off as a musician first. And then I kind of thought about being an artist, but I'm like, you know what? That's not my room. That's not my route. And I say, you know, let me just transition into just making stuff for other people so that they can sing over it, rap over it, whatever it is that they're trying to do. The first instrument I picked up on was the guitar. I've been playing that since I was like 12 years old. I'm 26 now, so that's like, what, 14 years playing it? And I was just like playing in church. So I would say like, I kind of got my musical background started in church. They try to stop me from making beats at first. They're just like, oh, he doing this and that. You should be making gospel music instead. I'm just like, I don't care. I just want to make what I like. And then they try to like deter me from doing it. They say, oh, you're just spending all your time. This is all the beat for $20, da, da, da. And then I started making money from it. And then they're just like, okay, you know what? Maybe you should consider doing this more often. I'm like, <laughs> I try to tell them. That started off with YouTube, right? I started posting stuff on there. And then I had people reaching out to me and they're just trying to pay for beats through Cash App, this and that. I'm like, okay, this is pretty great. But I said, you know, I gotta try to find a platform that's, I guess, more ideal, more quick, has licenses, things like that. And then Beatstars was the perfect thing for that. So once I signed up on Beatstars, that's when I was able to get a lot more consistent sales. I was able to get a way for clients to just keep up with me, essentially. And I discovered it through personal research. And then I saw how much it cost to get a membership with it. I said, you know what, I'm going to come right back to this. And then, yeah, 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 it's a nice little price, but it's still worth it, though. Because I was able to, like, make more than what it cost to even pay for it. So it was nothing for real. I like the fact that while using Beastars, there's, like, plenty of different things you could use, whether it's um, email marketing. That was something I tried to go down, try to see if I could like uh, reach out to people through there. You know, I got some new stuff, da, da, da. but that was just a lot for me to keep up with. It's kind of like you want to bring in new products as often as possible because well, if you leave it dormant, no one's going to go and check it out. They're just going to be like, okay, this place might as well just be dead. So when it comes to Beastars, I'm always just posting at the very least once a week, but I'm still trying to put out as much content as possible so that people have more stuff to like look at if they wanted to buy something, if they just want to like check out what I have, just have a large catalog for people. I don't even know how many beasts I got on Beastars right now. It's probably like over a hundred, I'll tell you that. The first thing I really had to find out was who's my audience, to find out like what that niche was. And then from there, I was just attacking it more consistently. That's definitely what helped us the business grow itself. Because just knowing who you're selling to, because you, it's not like I'm going to make Jersey beats for people in California, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. My main audience is just like people in Florida, South Florida, really. And we got South Florida sound, so I just focus on making those beats. You're taking American influences and then you're mixing it with Caribbean influences. I'm Haitian, too. So when you combine those two things together, you create this almost like an Afro-Latino fusion, essentially. And then Miami is an Afro-Latino city. So when you combine all those things together, it's like, okay, this is the sound that we got down here. No other place really got it like we do. They might try to mimic it, but they're gonna try to go for something else. I would even call what we got going on dance hall. I don't even know what I would call it. It's just Miami, it's like crib music. Depending on who's asking for the beat, like let's say if somebody wants an exclusive license or exclusive beat, I'll meet up with them. We might meet at the studio, we might meet at their crib, whatever's more convenient. I'll sit down with them, I'll make a beat, I'll give it to them. But let's say, for example, I meet with them, they don't want an exclusive license, they just want to have a beat that they could just rap on. I'll make a beat with them and I might still post it on my YouTube page and still, you know, link the beat stars. It kind of like works hand in hand in a sense. And then on top of that too, like I might be able to create content from that experience too. Like maybe I might be recording me with that client making beats. I just like put it out there. It kind of works hand in hand in a sense. Mm -hmm. The way I go, I go about it, there's seven days in a week. If I can at least get seven beats done for this one week, no matter what day it's done, no matter how I split it up, like that's kind of my goal. If you come to me on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you're gonna find some new stuff. 
right at the very least you might see new stuff on tuesday thursday saturday sunday but at the, you, you're gonna know for sure monday wednesday friday you're gonna see new stuff so i try to like at least stay consistent with that and that's definitely been something that's been helping me out for sure sometimes i can't be consistent right but because of the times that i was consistent it's kind of like it carries over in a sense let's say i might have been able to stay consistent from january to june and then like something came up i wasn't able to make any beats to like maybe august or october right i would still get traction from the other beats that i posted a while ago but i do see like you're saying like if i do post more consistently there is more traction a lot more comments a lot more likes reposts sharing all those things and that's boosting your views your watch hours all that stuff that stuff is definitely significant i do have a beat like that but i was so shook when i saw what beat it was i'm like what y'all guys like this beat <laughs> it's always a beat like you're making like probably like when you're sick or when you're just tired it's like trying to just go to bed be like you know what i need to just push something out anyway I have a few of those, at least like once a year, something just comes up, I'm like, man, this is, it's surprising what people like. It's never what you think. Some of them are really simple. Some of them, I would say that might be difficult to rap on, but I don't know. I really don't know what it is that kind of like draws people to it. I wish I could figure it out, man. I'm definitely proud of the Emma replacement that I got recently on her last EP. It wasn't even intentionally for her. We were just trying to make the most sexy R&B beat possible. You feel me? Like, something you can just feel it no matter who it is. And then I sent it to my friend, Jermon, and he ended up sending out, sending it out to her. And all I heard was like, yeah, bro, she recorded to it. I'm like, what? She did? I'm like, I believe when I say it released, it was released. I said, damn. <laughs> There's a lot of bad business that goes on. There's a lot of people that are kind of stingy or they're greedy. If I was more aware of it, I might've like changed what kind of direction I was going musically. Maybe I wouldn't have chose to do hip hop. I probably would've chose to do like um, reggaeton or uh, Afro beats. You know, just like choosing different paths. Cause I think sometimes with hip hop, you might run into some people that are like, you know, some wolves trying to like just get your bread. I should be the most versatile person ever, but if I were just to focus on this one thing, like that would have made a huge difference for me. I wouldn't say you don't need to be able to like make different genres, but if you're able to just make one genre and just be really, really good at that one thing, you're gonna excel no matter what. I know one dude, he he just sits down, he only makes Detroit beats. You ask him to make R&B, he says, I can't do it. But you ask him to make Detroit, everybody gonna wanna get that beat, so.